the next question that we're going to discuss, we're going to look at land use zones, and we're going to look at specifically some problems that we experience in land use zones, especially in big cities such as Johannesburg, Pretoria, and Durban. So what I have in front of me, if you look at figure 4.3, it shows the relationship between urban land use zones and the building density. Okay, what does build, building density mean? It means how close the structures are to one another. Okay, the density, it's a high density if there's a lot of people living there on a specific area. Okay, how do we determine it? We take the amount of people per square kilometers. That's population density. But building density is to determine how many buildings is there per square kilometer. Now, our question is regarding zone A. As you can see, exclamation mark over here. But let's just concentrate and see what's happening around us. And let's quickly see if we can identify all of the other zones and give a characteristic of them. Okay, as you can see, we have the CBD. What's the CBD? The Central Business District. How do we know it? Tallest buildings? Now, the next question I want to ask you, why is the building so tall in the CBD? Because the land is most expensive. Okay, it's cheaper to go up than sideways. Okay, keep that in mind. It's the tallest buildings that we find over here. Most expensive land. Okay, and very importantly, I want to show this, add the two this characteristic, even though we can't see it. Okay, all transport routes lead to the CBD. Okay, so we identify the CBD. Now, let's just focus on the low income residential area. Low income residential areas, you look at the property stands, it's usually the smallest, it's usually flats, okay? It's usually semi houses, mostly close to the CBD because back in the day, less transport cost involved, cheap labor, okay? It's people that have access to light industries and to the CBD. So it's usually flats or semi-houses. Uh, semi and then we move to middle income residential areas. As you can see, it's further away from the CBD. If you look at the property stands, the houses will be a big, bit bigger. You might find swimming pools, but if you look at the actual size of the stands, it might be bigger, okay? Further away, why? Because people can afford their own transport, okay? Now, they've mentioned the heavy industry over here. I'm just going to prolong our profile. Oops, I just want to get a green pen. And just, I'm just going to create a little tree over here that represents the rural area. Because very importantly, if you look at our heavy industries, it's usually on the outskirts. Why on the outskirts of our urban areas? Because it creates so much pollution, it creates so much noise pollution, air pollution, but also they need quite huge pieces of land. Okay, flat land, if possible, and land is cheaper, remember, how further you move away from the CBD. But if we look, okay, A, we still need to identify. I will identify it once I discuss all of this. Now, what we have here, between A and B, it looks like a green belt. Okay. What's a green belt? It's like a park, recreation area. Okay. Not allowed to build on it. Okay. It's there for recreation purposes and add to the fauna and flora of A, urban area. And then, just next to the green belt, we have the high income residential area. Usually, furthest away from the CBD, right? If you look at the property sizes, much bigger than middle income, okay? It's more aesthetically, people like to be closer to the green belt. It's like more peaceful, okay? More in touch with nature. And they can afford their own transport to work further away from the CBD, 
Okay, but now let's identify number A. Number, letter A. Apologies, great twelfths. Okay, what do we find at A? What's the zone area right next to the CBD? It's known as the transition zone. Okay, if I can use the example in Johannesburg, the transition zone in Johannesburg is close to Kingsington. Okay, Kingsington, the zone valley, the area situated over there. Okay, it's the area right next to the CBD. And uh, we will also accept the zone of DK. Okay, it's known as the transition zone, but we can also accept the zone of DK. Now, unfortunately, when we look at the transition zone, it's not pretty. Okay, it's usually dilapidated, houses doesn't look well. It's usually mixed functions, okay? Not a great area, but still regarding as high value. Now let's just quickly look at the questions that's being asked, and it's question 4.3, and last is final exam. Refer to the land use zone A, and we refer to it as the transition zone, okay? Transition zone means once we go away from the CVD to our residential areas, okay? Now, the next question, state two characteristics of land zone A. Now, I've mentioned to you, okay, dilapidated buildings. Uh, apologies. Dilapidated buildings means run down. Okay, it's not in a great condition. Okay, you will usually see it's mixed functions. You know, when you go to the transition zone, you see residential areas, people living there. Okay, but it's low income residential areas. It's usually because of urban sprawl, urbanization that takes place, right? Overcrowding taking place. More people that's supposed to live in these properties live there. So it's usually residential areas. And I'm going to put there in brackets, overcrowding taking place. But in the same time, we have commercial property as well. Now, what's commercial property? Businesses, okay, it's houses. Houses has converted into businesses. We might have buildings, double-story buildings, three-story buildings, that's commercial properties. So there's still commercial properties as well. Now, especially in a place like Joburg, we experience social evils in dilapidated zones, transition zones, for instance, prostitution and drugs. And you will usually find graffiti on the walls as well. It's just some of the characteristics. It's really, you know, it's not the prettiest of areas. Okay. But the interesting thing about it, we also find light industries. For instance, bakeries. Okay. Now remember... Bakeries can be close to the CBD light industries because they create less pollution. And light industries can also operate on different storage buildings. I'm just going to write it there. Can operate on multi-storage buildings. Whereas our heavy industries, we looked at that, I just want to go back to our diagram. Heavy industries, usually on the outskirts, prefer topography that's usually flat, very importantly, abundance of land because it's cheap. Because we're talking about a massive operational manufacturing industry taking place. Okay, but transition zone, light industries, found very close to it. Okay, and... 
the light industry is very close to the market. And what's the market? It's the CBD. And it might be the middle income or even the low income residential areas. For instance, the bakery. But now, we've painted a kind of a bleak picture about this transition zone. First of all, dilapidated building, residential areas that's overcrowded with commercial properties next to it. Crime is usually high, graffiti all over the wall. We do find drugs and prostitution. But believe it or not, the transition zone still holds value. Okay, the land is still very expensive. Simple reason, because it's closest to the CBD. Okay, because many times what happens, our CBD can't expand. That's the reason in the first place the buildings went up. Okay, became taller and taller and taller because it was cheaper to increase the height of the buildings than going expanding because the land was so expensive. And that's coming to our next question. Um, suggest one reason for land use zone A having high land values. And like I said, it's the closest to the CBD. Oh, this one. It's the closest to the CBD. And we can also mention if the CBD needs to expand, the demand of the property will increase. And once the demand is there, what does demand do? It creates competition. Okay. As soon as there's competition, the land value is going to increase. So I'm going to write it down there. Competition for land will increase the value of the land. Okay, now, if you look at our next question, our next question states, give two pieces of evidence that suggest that land use zone B is a residential zone of high income. Now, let's just quickly identify it. Land use zone B. Okay, that's not really difficult to identify because they've mentioned it. If you look at land use, there's land use zone B. Just want to get the correct pen. Now, they've mentioned the high income residential area, but more importantly, have a look at the house sizes, comparison to the mid, middle income residential areas. Much bigger houses, situated next to a green belt, furthest away from the CBD. We already discussed it. So the question states, Give two pieces of evidence that suggest that land use zone B is a residential zone of high income. Okay, first reason, look at the property sizes. It's much bigger. So we can mention the property stands. Property stands is big. The second reason is situated close to the green belts. Now, as you can see, it's furthest away from light as well as heavy industries.
and as always, high income residential areas is on the outskirts. of urban areas. Okay, now, if you look at our last question regarding land use zone Bs and the transition zone, and the question states, explain why land use zone B and land use zone Z, C are not compatible. Now, what does compatible mean? Let's just find out where is land use zone C. Now, there's land use zone C and there's B. Now C is heavy industries, okay. B is high income residential areas. Compatible, why can't they be together? Simple reason. If you look at heavy industries, think of the pollution that's gonna be created. Not only noise pollution, but air pollution. Now if you look at heavy industries, they require many unskilled labor. So close to our heavy industries, we will find low income residential areas as well to provide the heavy industries with unskilled labor. Now besides for the amount of pollution that's gonna be created by the heavy industries, and besides for the low income residential areas close to them, it's definitely not gonna be compatible to the high income residential areas. So let's just write a couple of things down why won't people of high income residential areas go and live there? And first of all, air pollution. Okay, not only air pollution, but noise pollution. Okay, now we've talked about it when we look at heavy industries, they need massive surface areas, cheap surface areas, right? Because they're processing, manufacturing. So obviously the land value is not gonna be high. So it can't be compatible because it will reduce land value. Okay, 